the EDR or the antivirus program fails to detect this malicious program using the signature based detection. Hi everyone, in this video you are about to enter into a world where the line between offense and defense in the digital realm becomes really a bit blurred. We are going to explore with examples how it has become so much easy for cyber criminals to use powerful AI systems such as ChatGPT to do all the wrongdoings that they are doing. And also with this video, I am starting this new AI security series in this channel by putting my cyber security hat on. But before we proceed, let me save my bomb first. This video is purely purely for educational purpose only and it should not be used for any illegal activities or even for fun. So let's dive in responsibly and uncover the secrets of securing our digital world together. If you are first time in the channel, my name is Abhijit, you are watching Note Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovation for your future and your business. Let's get started. So ChatGPT has marked their 180 million active users. Now probably many of these users are probably business owners, writer, coder or any other business professionals who are using this powerful technology to ease their way of working. But there are certainly a large chunk of cyber criminals or script kiddies who are new to the world of cyber crime is using these powerful AI systems to break the barrier of the digital security that protects you and me from being a victim of a cyber crime. Now, there could be thousands and thousands methods that can be employed using AI by the attackers, for example, from writing effective phishing emails to writing highly effective Trojan horse or malware or ransomware or using deepfakes, etc, etc. And quite frankly, in my opinion, most of our industry standard security trainings, which helps employees getting, let's say, how to detect a phishing email are already way too old fashioned and not at all going to help survive the organizations much longer against the attacks unless organization starts adopting AI into their digital defense. For example, when an AI system is writing a phishing emails, that would be much more shiny and professional and even easily impersonate a person who is of authority, for example, a CEO, CTO or HR, etc. to compel an employee to click that unknown link in the email which could just download the malware into his or her system as a cyber criminal would want. Now, if you are really new to the cyber security domain and all these terms that I have used feels Hebrew to you, don't worry, because in this series of these videos, I am going to explore a much of those sensitive topics, but just for your learning and securing yourself or your business. So in this video, I am going to discuss what a malware is and its different forms and then I'll show you how I have created a simple demonstration of a malware by just chatting with ChatGPT by easily bypassing its security. And then we would briefly discuss about how your antivirus usually detects a malware and what common methods attackers use to escape antivirus detection. And finally, I'm going to discuss how you can protect yourself and your organization from such type of malware attacks. So if you're ready, let's jump in. Okay, so what is malware? Malwares are nothing but a malicious software. That means any software that is designed for malicious purpose. Now there are generally around 12 type of malware that is employed by the cyber criminals such as virus, worms, ransomware, trojan horses, etc, etc. Now many of this you probably have heard before. Now discussing each of which in this single video is going to take a lot of time. So I would probably cover each of these as a separate video in future. But for this video, let's focus one of the very common one called trojan horse. A trojan horse or simply called trojan is a type of malware that disguises itself as a legitimate software or sometimes it is hidden within a legitimate software and it is tampered with a malicious code or executable intended for stealing information or spying user activities or simply creating backdoor for remote access for the cyber criminals. Okay, to understand more, I think let's create a Trojan horse, shall we? So here I have asked ChatGPT to create me a malware code but it has rejected to write this. Hmm, now that's good. But security researchers around the world have found multiple ways to bypass this security just by using effective prompt engineering. 
Now let's look at the code. Okay, so here is the code and the code is very simple. So here basically we have an input text area where a user would enter a YouTube URL and then there is a button which transcript. Once user clicks this button, it calls the process URL function and the process URL functions basically fetch the transcript from the YouTube for that video. Now this is all good as a legitimate software, right? But if you see here, there is a hidden function that's been called as part of the process URL after it has faced the transcript. And this is the method where we are kind of simulating a malware behavior or a Trojan horse behavior. For the purpose of this video, I kept it very simple. So basically what I am doing here is I'm copying a file called example.txt for example from a victim's machine which I have categorized here as a folder and then it is copying it into an attacker's machine which is again another folder in the same machine for this purpose of the demo but a cyber criminal could write any behavior that it wants as part of this trojan horse so just to check before we run the program the victim folder have an example.txt let's write this is a sensitive file and if we go to the attacker's machine the attacker machine doesn't have the file yet so let's run the program okay so if i now run this program on the face of it it's just asking an youtube url as in the ui and let me give the url here and click fetch transcript which has fetched the transcript as any legitimate software would do but in the back end it has copied that file into the attacker's machine or the folder for this purpose of the demo and if you open this folder it already contains the sensitive information right so this is a typical trojan horse behavior where a legitimate software could be infected with a trojan horse which would do functions in the backend without users knowledge now there is a problem with this code for example if i compile the code and if i try to send it to a victim and if the victim's computer has a up-to-date antivirus which is also called as endpoint detection and response system that could easily identify this behavior or this payload and block this program and it will also create a hash and it will save it into a you know virus or worms database so that any other kind of same ADR system could read that signature and if this same code or same program is being sent to an another victim's machine and if that machine has an antivirus that could easily detect this program just by calculating the hash of the program so that is called signature based detection now signature based detection is really weak because if i change even a single character within this code then the signature of this entire programs becomes different right and then in that case adr would fail to detect the program for that reason cyber criminal usually used to do is they employ a various method to ensure that every time this program runs it uses a different payload to do this similar function or use case how they do so is very simple generally they use two type of approach one is encryption and decryption of the malicious payload every time when a program is run and the other way it does is by using an approach called obfuscations so for this purpose of the demo let's look at how an encryption and decryption could actually change the payload every time this function is run so all i would do is i would introduce another function here called simple encrypt decrypt which will take a message and a key and then in this simulate malware behavior i would generate a random key every time this function is called and run and then i will encrypt the source path using let's say this random key and also encrypt the destination path with the key so this becomes the actual payload which is used to do let's say the copy of the sensitive data but i am using an encrypt and decrypt function to encrypting and decrypting the malicious payload every time it is run and then add the decryption function here and let's change the print statement here and now let's use the decrypted path source path and destination path to copy the sensitive information so let's stop it and restart the application 
let's use the same url and then let me also delete this copied example from the attackers machine and then hit fetch transcript now if you see that it's encrypted the payload and then it has decrypted the payload and it has copied the file let me delete the file once again and then rerun fetch transcript once again see this time the payload is completely different than the previous payload right so attacker use this kind of technique to encrypt and decrypt the malicious payload every time a program is run so what that helps is the edr or the antivirus program fails to detect this malicious program using the signature based detection I hope that is making sense to you. Now, of course, this entire code is not a prime example of how an actual malware or Trojan horse with polymorphism looks like. Usually, attackers use C, C++ or assembly language code to write a true polymorphic malware, which is really difficult for antiviruses to track using signature-based detection. However, the modern EDRs or modern antivirus knows that they have this limitation and that is where they sometime employ behavioral analysis of a code so that means it checks if there is any anomaly in the behavior of the program if the antivirus finds that the program is doing something malicious from a behavioral point of view then it can easily detect the program and block it and that is where a cyber criminal tries to employ a method called obfuscations so what they would do basically instead of writing this entire code they, they will keep this entire functions somewhere in a remote server and then instead of writing the entire code here they will just write a code like get code like a function so they will call the get code function and let's say this is saved in attackers.servers.com slash malicious function so this is basically going to do an http dot request and just provide the url and so basically in this url this code will be written and when this function will call the url it will get this code that will be dynamically fetched by the get code method and then it will be executed in the runtime how you can do that is very simple you'll just save it into a variable such as malicious code equal to this and then you just use python's execute function and provide the malicious code so this will dynamically fetch the code and execute the code as it downloads the code and this will be run dynamically so this is how they achieve the obfuscation now there is a problem even with this approach because here if you see that the code is static so if somehow the antivirus program is able to detect that there is a malicious code that's been run then it will again create a signature and it will save it and if the same payload is coming in the next run then it can block that code to run right so for that reason now attackers are using a very different mechanism which is really worrisome so what they are doing is instead of writing the code here or calling this url they will probably call openai api.com slash v1 slash chat url which is let's say an openai api they will write a system message it will call the openai api and like a one-shot programming they will also use a sample code to use ai to generate a similar code and now they will use a temperature of 0.5 or 0.3 to ensure that every time ai would generate a code it will generate something different for example maybe the variable name will be different or the key function will be different something will be different or the key name would be different to ensure that the code payload or the malicious payload is generated by ai every time differently so that as a result this trojan horse would be running as a legitimate program in the victim's computer as long as victim would use this particular software now that is the same technique that is discussed in this particular paper called Black Mamba where they have created a polymorphic keylogger which would run on the fly 
and it would generate dynamic code every time user would run this program and they have actually tested that this program that they have created the keylogger that they have created has evaded the edr detection mechanism so you can see this could be really really serious for your organization if you have been a victim of such attack by cyber criminals so now we are coming to the final section of the video where we will discuss how you can protect yourself or your business from this kind of trojan horse or malware so protecting yourself or organizations from this kind of trojan horse which is polymorphic in nature requires a multi-layered security approach one of the first thing that you should do you need to have an advanced security tools or adr system which also should be updated always the second security approach is always keep your system software up to date to avoid misuse of any vulnerabilities that is within your system setup the third most important steps is not to use any unknown software or not signed software in your system so all your software has to be from a trusted source or from a trusted company and you should always update the software from the trusted gateways for your organization you should run penetration testing and do regular security audits and also make sure you regularly back up your data especially your sensitive data so that if this kind of trojan horse basically encrypt your file in a form of ransomware you are safe in that regard and finally you should definitely subscribe to this channel because i am going to also explore the other kind of malware and how to protect against itself in the future videos so you get to know all the type of threats that is lurking around your business or organization and you can deploy safe method to protect yourself or your business with that said i am going to end this video i hope you have learned something new and all the code that i have shown you will be available through the discord and patreon community so please make sure to join there take care and i'll see you in the next one